Intermittent fasting. We all know people fast for weight loss, but researchers are looking at whether it can make our brains work better and longer. Going long periods of time, sometimes even whole days with little to no food, is a popular way to boost performance for some Silicon Valley types. But does it actually work? Are there any drawbacks? And how long do you have to go without eating? Let's take a look. Before we do that, it's important to know that fasting comes with certain risks, and nobody should try it before talking to their doctor first. With that said, let's talk about how long you have to fast to see any potential benefits. The researchers I talked to said it was a minimum of 12 to 14 hours. That has to do with how the body fuels itself. Usually, the body uses glucose, a sugar, as fuel. But after about 12 hours of fasting, the body starts using ketones, which come from fats. The time is shorter if you exercise. Scientists think it's that metabolic switch that starts the chain of events that leads to some of the potential brain-related benefits of intermittent fasting. So what are the benefits? Neuroscientists like Mark Matson, who study the effects of intermittent fasting on animal brains, have found that it can improve focus, slow declines in brain health, and improve cells' ability to cope with their version of stress. In people, there's some preliminary evidence that it can help with mood, too. In his animal research, Mark looked at the hippocampus, which is a brain region that's important for learning and memory. He found that during fasting, some neurons in the hippocampus, which respond to glutamate, the brain's most important chemical messenger, are more active. Those are the brain cells that help you learn and remember what's important. So if you're an animal in the wild, you're hungry, you haven't found anything to eat for a long time, those neural circuits involved in trying to figure out where to get the food better be active. But then, something really interesting happens in the brains of his animals after weeks of intermittent fasting. Memory becomes more efficient. That happens because a separate set of neurons quiets down the activity of some of those glutamate-friendly neurons, specifically those that aren't involved in the task at hand. Basically, your brain becomes more efficient by turning down the noise and focusing in. And I've, I've noticed this personally that I really function well in the morning when I haven't eaten anything. Preliminary evidence from Courtney Peterson, another intermittent fasting expert I spoke to, suggests that there could be some mood-related benefits. We found that people reported a greater energy levels, fewer feelings of depression and dejection. In individuals who actually stuck with their program five days a week every week, they also reported less anger. Intermittent fasting may also help slow down declines in brain health at least in older patients. That's because fasting kicks into high gear, a process called autophagy, which literally means self-eating. Autophagy might sound weird, but it might help explain why the handful of studies that have found brain-related benefits of intermittent fasting have found the strongest effects among older people. One study in patients with mild cognitive impairment, which usually precedes Alzheimer's, found that intermittent fasting had benefits in keeping further mental decline at bay. So you might be wondering, how are these things connected? Less food equals better brain health? Well, think of autophagy as the cell's recycling system. It helps keep your neurons and, by extension, your brain free of toxic junk. During this process, little Pac-Man-style sacs engulf old proteins and mitochondria that aren't working properly and causing your cells stress. Those proteins and mitochondria get chewed up, and their components are used again. As we grow older, though, our cells become more prone to being filled up with toxic proteins, in part because autophagy becomes less efficient. So that's where fasting comes into play. It gives autophagy a little boost. This is all really interesting science, but intermittent fasting isn't for everyone. I generally don't recommend it before, you know, your mid-20s. That's because it can stunt growth. Courtney also said you should avoid it if you're pregnant. If you have diabetes, consult with your doctor. And for those who work the night shift, scientists know even less about its effects on people. One of the drawbacks to intermittent fasting is that food is social, so people feel like they're missing out on life if they can't eat with their friends. Plus, fasts that last whole days may not work as well long term because people get hungry or hangry. I mean, chocolate and Cheetos sound really good right now. Moving forward, Courtney told me that a big open question was which fasting schedules actually work. 
And Mark is currently scanning people's brains to look for changes in brain activity and connectivity between brain areas. In other words, he wants to replicate his animal studies in people. If researchers are able to pin down the benefits and drawbacks of intermittent fasting more specifically, then people would be able to make more informed decisions about whether to try it or not.